Beyond the Block is a speaking series that gives guys inside of prison the opportunity to share their ideas with an outside audience, which is not something that's common in here. There's a 30-foot wall surrounding the jail. It might as well be a dome. Once you come in here, your voice doesn't get out. There's a lot of talent behind these bars. This is an opportunity for guys to say, hey, you know what? Yes, I screwed up, but I still have value. Everybody knows we're in a maximum security prison, but we want it to feel like the focus is on the message, not on where it's being delivered from. Turning it to a stage gives the guys an opportunity to be the center of attention, not because of the notoriety of their crime, but actually for the value of what they have to say. This will be the first time some guys are on stage. This will be the first time some guys are part of a production. It gives them the opportunity to come up with something creative. Think that thing through. How do you problem solve? How do you come up with ideas that are creative and good? This is rehabilitative work. It gives a sense of purpose and people to see that we're regular people who have qualities that are valuable to society and to our families. Every single part of this production came from the men at Sing Sing, naming it, doing the artwork for it. It's just kind of like delivering a voice to folks in any way they see fit for an entire day and capturing it to share with the rest of the world. Welcome to Beyond the Block. Out of the 17 years that I've been incarcerated, this is the first and only event of its kind where so much attention is put on the ideas of those who have been incarcerated. Now, some would say that our criminal legal system is woefully broken, but I would disagree. I say our criminal legal system is operating just as it was intended to. We get so encased in these boxes and in these cages that sometimes it's hard to realize that the work that you're doing really matters. An event like this gives us that opportunity to show the world that what I'm doing does matter and it can affect people. One of the things that you always want to have is a voice. You always want to be able to be heard, especially when you haven't been. I wanted to be able to say something and I wanted to be a part of making some formidable change in the environment I came from. In here, we become dependent on so many people. But being on that stage, I feel like I am in control. And everything that takes place from that moment forward is within my hands. On October 26, 1994, I was removed from my home at the age of 12 and placed into the foster care system. And today, 29 years later, I've yet to return home. Writing this piece was difficult because I had to dig deep and deal with emotions that I was still wrestling with. So being able to take those feelings and bring them to the surface to where I'm able to speak about it, it was challenging. But with the fellas here, we all supported each other and we were able to come together and build together as a community to get to where we are today. <laughs> Yo, I'm not gonna lie, it's just so many of y'all. <laughs> oh my God, all right. The moment I was incarcerated, I've been on a mission to change my life. I want to be surrounded by people who are thriving just like me. This is just one of those things, like one of those benchmarks. I feel like it gives me more motivation. I feel like I accomplished something. Good. Coming up, we have a brother named Mr. T.C. Terrence Carter, and he's going to talk about how mental health reentry programs are very important upon release. Mr. Terrence Carter. I want you to picture a 13-year-old child sitting in a bathtub with a knife in their hand as they stare at their wrist contemplating suicide. That was me. And I thought killing myself was my only option as I struggled with an undiagnosed mental illness. There's a lot of shame involved with being in prison, regardless of whatever your successes may be in here. So I'm trying to move past that. Being able to talk about something that means something to me helps me stay in touch with my human side. It helps heal. With the unconditional love and support of the strongest, most resilient person that I know, <sighs> my mom, Cheryl. Thank you, Mom. I just want her to be proud of me again. That's all. I just want her to see her son again. Almost 30 years later, I've been given hope. I stand here in front of you today as the Hudson Link Mercy College Class of 2022 valedictorian. 
There was a time when I believed in and was fueled by pain and agony. But now, I believe in the capacity for change. Over the last 20 some odd years of being in prison, I started to identify in myself my own behaviors that was causing me a lot of pain and agony. I realized that the world wasn't hurting me. I was the one hurting the world. I was the one hurting me. If I want things different, I have to start doing things different. I want to leave a legacy of honor. I do not want to be remembered for the negative behaviors that I've done in the past. I owe a debt to society. I owe a debt to my family. I owe a debt to myself. And those debts will be repaid over the remainder of my life. When I had my freedom, no one heard my voice. But I come here in a place like this and they afford me an opportunity so the world can hear my voice, so the world can see who I really am. I hope that they see that a person can change. You give a person an opportunity, if you allow them to see something other than what they thought they knew, it's a great possibility that they become something a lot better. I think if folks just realize that we could take places like this and build something so much better, using the folks that live there and the folks that work there to collaborate, to create things that could change the whole world.